Welcome to another issue of Optic Street Debates. My name is Taylor. My name is Andras. Hello. And we have a pleasure today, or a privilege, to speak about the differences between uh, Pulsar Proton and Pulsar Core thermal clip-ons. So let's go straight to the, to the point and let's start with a comparison of uh, optical properties. Yeah, sure. So we have the two devices. Uh, I would like to open this with a sensor resolution. Mm -hmm. The sensor resolution is the same. It's 384 by 288. That's really funny. Yeah. This sensor resolution is on the market since 10 years almost, and it's still the most common sensor resolution in, in all thermal optical devices. Yeah? It is, but the NETD, so the noise equivalent uh, temperature difference, has been improved on the Proton. Yeah. Uh, on the core, it's under under 60 millikelvins. On the new Proton, is below 40 millikelvin. So, so you see de details better. Eh? Details better, especially in, I would say, harsh weather conditions, rain, mm -hmm. fog, and when the temperature is really low. So this is the most noticeable situation. But in, in my opinion, or in, in my experience, you always see the difference. Even when there are normal conditions with uh, temperatures, which are summer temperatures, I would say, you still see the difference that the lower NETD gives you better image quality. What about image rendering, the whole software and algorithms? Yeah, so the image rendering here with Proton, we have the image de detail boost option, which mm -hmm. pools are announced, I think, last year or maybe a year and a half ago. Um, it's included on the Proton. However, when you turn the device on for the first time, it's off. So yeah, it's... if you wish to have the best possible image rendering, you have to go to the menu and turn it on. Yeah, that, that's yeah. <laughs> really funny because we already gave Proton to a couple of influencers uh, to use them in the field and like five out <laughs> of six didn't know that they have to turn on the image boost. So it's really hard to understand why the image detail boost uh, function is turned off by default. Yeah, that's so. quite interesting. Uh, I think that when you turn this uh, function on, you can expect a little bit more battery drain. Yeah, but you get a much better image details. Yeah, the it's, detail recognition gets to a whole new level. Yeah, yeah. it's completely different, uh, different image. Uh, what about the lens? Uh, the lenses, the, the core has 50 millimeter lens, yeah? Yeah, and the new Proton has 30 it's really millimeter small, lens. Yeah. Yeah, this is was quite interesting for me uh, when they first announced it. So they went for a smaller lens and this is for now the only available model, right? Mm -hmm. And it's fixed focus, yeah? It's fixed focus on uh, 100 meters. 100 meters? I think so. I'm no. not completely sure, but I'm I also not completely sure. Yeah, yeah, it's fixed because you don't have any focusing rings on it, mm. in contrast to core, which has a focusing ring on the objective. It's really funny because in my experience, majority of customers who bought uh, Pulsar Core, they put the focus, let's say, on 100 meters and then they <laughs> left it alone <laughs> forever. But now, a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't have a, a focusing mechanism. It, you're not able to adjust the focusing. You can never please all. You can never please your customers. Yeah. It's maybe now it's easier. You have one less thing to deal with. So yeah. for some people, it will be easier to use. And it's much, much smaller. Yeah. It's way, way smaller. Do you think that pools are went for this fixed focus because they, I don't know, aim this device towards people who shoot on 100 meters or somewhere like that. I, I would say when you're using it, in reality, you don't change focus that much. And I think they pursued two goals, to make a device as small and as light as possible and to make it as affordable as possible. And to ga gain some advantage in these two uh, categories, I would say, fixed focus is a, it's a viable choice. And for 99% of all the users, it will work well because all the way from, let's say, 30 meters to 150 meters, it works well. And that's enough for a clip-on, honestly speaking. With a, someone who wants to shoot on a longer distance with a thermal clip-on will buy um, Krypton. So it will not buy Proton. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's a really, to make it as affordable as possible and as small as possible. Have there been any changes to the pixel pitch, perhaps? Uh, no, 17 in both 17 cases. 17 in both cases, right? And yeah. refresh rate is also the same at 50 hertz. Yeah. So you have a fluid image without any interruptions. You can observe moving targets and you won't get, yeah. the image will be fluent. Honestly speaking, when we compared it in the field, the image quality is almost identical. It's really hard to say which one is better. Uh, it does, uh, I think that the 
pr uh, proton it does features a little bit wider field of view i think i think so too yeah. uh, but when you look at the details uh, they are on the same level but you gain so much more with this lightness and compactness of of the of the proton you also get a slightly better um uh, display resolution so the mm -hmm. the core has 640 by 480 this one yeah. has 1024 by uh, 768, I think. So it's I think improved. You can AMOLED also HD, right? use it. They say from two magnification on your daytime scope can be from two to four times. Honestly speaking, also on six times it still works. So the display is really good. Uh, normally you have to look everything through its price because it's uh, 2,500 euros. Uh, for this device, all other uh, thermal clip-ons were much more expensive or they still are much more expensive. So, with which topic should we continue? I think we've covered optical properties. If we forgot yeah. something, we might return to it later in the video. Okay. Uh, what about the physical properties? Have there been any changes to the way the adapter is mounted A on big change. the device? Yeah, so the, the new Proton has an, uh, has an a thread for the adapter, for the new PSP adapter, even though in our experience, the majority of people will use the reducing ring either from Pulsar, either from a Smart Clip or Rusan, which goes directly here. And then you get a normal thread, which was common on Dedal devices many years ago. Now all uh, adapters, Rusan and Smart Clip uh, adapters uh, use this, uh, this thread. So this is, and I, in my opinion, the thread is much better option than the previous Bayonet. Solution, yeah. Solution with two two pins was. The core had two pins yeah. all the time, right? With this solution, there was a Rusan solution for it, which goes on top, and I would say the best solution on the market, it's a PCM52 converter from SmartClip. We also have a separate video about it. This is a solution which I would say uh, converts the whole bayonet um, part of the device to a normal thread, which is common on all adapters. Because we have seen that in this market, in Europe at least, Smart Clip and Rusan, they're dominating the market. So everybody is buying these adapters and they're, they grow really, really huge, both Smart Clip and Rusan. Uh, so all in all, you're able to get the reducing rings to convert their um, either the bayonet or the thread to a normal standard thread on the on the adapters. It is funny that some other manufacturers, they did went with this standard directly, so you don't need any reducing rings, but Pulsar still has their own solutions. Uh, and if you're talking about the Proton and Krypton solution, you can get either a fixed solution from <coughs> SmartClip or a moving a solution with SmartClip where you can center the display image in the center of your daytime scope image. It doesn't affect the point of impact. This is something that so many people get wrong. Even if you just hold the device in front of your scope, it will not affect the point of impact. Even if it's not correctly aligned and so on, it will not affect the point of impact. Now that we're here, I want, I'd like to ask you if, I think that you had to zero the core, right? Yeah. What about Proton? Do you also, have to zero it? Yeah, as for well? the first time you zero it and then it works fluently. fluently. Uh, the only difference is that uh, zeroing in Proton is done the same way like on forward F455 and it's really, really easy. You just go into the menu and move the point of impact uh, to the center of, uh, of the, your scope and that's it. And it's if the scope is zero, easier. then the Proton is zeroed. Yeah. And that's it. And it's, you can shoot because the pixels in the display are really small, you can shoot really accurately with it. Uh, with cores, the whole system of zeroing was a little bit more elaborated and for us it was no problem. I zeroed so many cores that I, did, I lost count. But for majority of customers who were doing it for the first time, it was quite hard. With the Proton, it's much, much easier. Uh, we'll also do a video how to zero Proton. Uh, check it out when it's going to be published and uh, you will see it's, it's really easy and it works well. I also think that this flat surface on the bottom is great to have because mm -hmm. once you mount the Proton 
on the adapter and then on the scope. Basically, when you have the adapter on it, the adapter, the lowest part of the adapter is the lowest part of the con the whole construction. You can even have yeah. as uh, iron sights on your rifle, and you will still be able to use the the proton. And this is something what I think proton is the best in the market at the moment. It's much better than all com competitors, and in, in this segment, is also better than um, Krypton, because honestly speaking, it it comes quite high compared to to the scope because it's so small. So when you put it on a daytime scope, you can even have an iron sight below it and it will not be a problem. So this is really nice. All in all, in general, the Proton is made out of uh, magnesium and the whole build quality and fit and finish is much better than on the core. Even though, honestly speaking, with cores, we were selling them for seven years or how long. Really, this is an old device. They are a true workhorse. They can withstand so much abuse and not fail that this is almost unimaginable. Now with new Proton, which is uh, made out of magnesium, it's going to be probably even better. Let's hope we will see, but the track record of the of the core is it's really splendid. So once the device is mounted, how does it stand? Is it is it turned like this? Or no, like it's, this? it's like this. It's upwards. like this, right? You have the battery yeah. on top and the, the lens is in the optical axis of the of the daytime scope. Also, the menus, now all the buttons for the menus are uh, on the side, not on top anymore. So like this. And I really like the, um, I would say, to get re reacquainted with a rotating button. It's all, I think it's really simple. They did position the buttons intuitively because you have two buttons. One is for power off, yeah. then you have the, the recording button and the mm -hmm. image capturing button. And the, everything else is done with this rotating knob. Yeah. So I think it's really easy to <laughs> memorize this. With core, I always had trouble yeah, remembering so what does the right button do, what does the left button do. It yeah. was problematic, but with I said <laughs> reacquainted with this button because the same system was on quantum devices yeah. many years ago from Poser. And I know you liked best. that the solution yeah. very much and was you quite just <laughs> rotate it to get to the right option, then press it and choose the option. It's it's the perfect way. To, to manipulate the menu and everything. I think this is also much better than on Kryptons, much better on, on any other device from Pulsar. This rotating button, I hope that future generation of Pulsar devices will all have it, honestly speaking. It's really uh, nice. What's also different are the batteries. Yeah, I think this is one of the huge steps yeah. forward. And this is also one of the main advantages of Pulsar against everybody else. Yeah. So Core used to have a CR, one to three A batteries, like all clip-ons from all competitors and so on. Yes. But the new Proton has the APS-5 batteries, which hold six, seven hours even. And they're interchangeable. They're really affordable. It's like 45 euros for this battery. You get two of them. Yeah, I think this is the first time that you get two of batteries, yeah. I think. And with uh, one device. With, yeah. with one device with Pulsar. And I think this is a really nice touch yeah. because uh, this is one of their biggest priorities. When you go out in the field, you can, when the battery <laughs> the dies, you just simply replace it in a matter of seconds. You don't yeah. need any power banks or Nothing. anything else. It's, this is something for, for Pulsar users, when they get to use to this system of interchangeable batteries on all their thermal devices, it's just, it's, there is no way going back to, to devices which have internally built batteries or, or a normal standard batteries because the ease of use is so much better with these batteries that this is a big leap that Pulsar did and no one else uh, followed until now. Uh, and you insert it here, right? Yeah. right? And then you have to just pry a little force and, yeah, and screw it to the right it yeah. inside. Easy. Really what cool. is a little bit, I would say, uncomfortable when you're using gloves, it's quite hard to open it and pull it out. Yeah, the surface here yeah. is a little bit... Uh, it's small. It's small, yeah. So with gloves it's quite hard, and especially if it's cold and so on. But I understand because the battery has to be positioned uh, so strongly in its um, compartment because this device can handle up to 375 Holland Holland caliber recoil, and mm -hmm. with such a recoil the battery has to really be uh, securely place. placed. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand why this is why they're using this system. You also get a charger. Yeah, for so two batteries. At for the same two time. batteries at the same time and two batteries. Yeah, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. Now let's go to the differences in terms of multimedia. Yeah, um, as you said, Core is a little bit of an outdated device. It was mm -hmm. 
selling in great numbers, but now it's time is slowly coming to an end. Yeah, it was like uh, best yeah. selling clip on thermal clip on by far. And I understand why, because this device was really, it was a robust, rugged, always working. It was a workhorse, failure. right? Yeah, it, it's, it's really a great device. And at that time, multimedia capabili capabilities were not as, um, were not on so many devices yeah. as now in 2021. And naturally, many hunters want to share their uh, hunting, best hunting moments True. with their friends. And this is why the new Proton, of course, comes with both image capturing capability and recording capability. And it's all done with this button here. So and it also features uh, Wi-Fi connectivity. Eh? Also, and you can connect it to a smartphone app, Stream Vision. We all know yeah. this is, I think, still the most sophisticated app on the market for think, yeah. for digital night vision. Now, in the beginning thermal. of 2021, still there is no real competitor. And when you go through uh, Google Store, or now it's called Google Play. And then you try all other apps for yeah, thermal devices. The and they just keep upgrading it. They add mm -hmm. language packs and many new features. When we talk about the upgrades, can you upgrade the software on Core? <laughs> I think not. I don't think so. No. What about on, on Proton? Here it's easy. You can mm -hmm. even do that through a smartphone app. Mm -hmm. And it will only take you a couple of seconds to just access the menu in the smartphone app. And then you can yeah. update it via the app. And this is again, I would say, a really positive uh, possibility because with batteries, you can make sure that even when batteries die in three years, four years, like every battery in every cell phone or everywhere dies, you just buy a new battery for 45 euros and you have device which is like new. And the other thing is uh, with the development, each year <clears throat> there are better algorithms for image rendering. And if you upgrade, if you're able to upgrade your device every two years or something like that, uh, the device doesn't get so outdated, outdated yeah. so fast. And we know that Pulsar frequently releases mm -hmm. updates for their existing devices. Yeah. It happened before with Helion, so... It will happen also with... It will happen also Proton. with Proton, yeah. Yeah, that, that's big plus. So the life uh, duration or uh, lifetime of this device is going to be much longer due to interchangeable batteries and upgradable software. Uh, a big plus compared to, to core. Another big plus here is the color modes. We mm -hmm. have eight color modes on yeah. the Proton. We of course have the most popular white hot and black hot, and then we have red hot, uh, red monochrome, sepia. Red Man monochrome is really good for your eye. Uh, in, in the middle of the night, it's easier to watch into red monochrome image than, than white. I think it all depends on what kind of a situation you find yourself in, True. and then you pick the mode that suits the mm -hmm. scenario best. With with uh, Core, you simply had uh, two modes. You had black hot, white hot, and you just, by pressing one of the buttons, you switched between those. Yeah. Uh, and that was basically it. In the, the second generation of Core, there was first generation, which has 25 pixel uh, pitch. Then second generation came with a green image and uh, 17 micron pixel pitch. And this is the third generation, which is black and white. Basically only black and white was only the color change, nothing else. Before that it was green. And again, you were able to invert if it was uh, bright green or, or dark green, which meant the warm object or not. Price-wise, I think that mm -hmm. the core devices went through a roller coaster, Ooh, right? Yeah, <laughs> but they are on the market for a really long time. And like Poser is changing the whole market by making all these thermal devices accessible to people. So I remember the first generation of, of core, which I never had in my hands except on EVA, was uh, 25 microns pixel pitch and it was green. And it costs like 4,500 euros. And it was, I think, 2014, 2013, really long time ago. Then the second generation was the green color, uh, 17 micron pixel pitch. And we sold hundreds of those devices. Uh, and this was, I would say, the device which made Pulsar what Pulsar now is in, in terms of uh, perception of people because this was something that really was rugged and always worked and it worked really great. The image quality was fantastic. Then the black and white came out. It was just like a small facelift of the device. This is the, this one here, the third generation. And so the first generation was 4,500 
500 euros, then the second generation was like 3,700 euros. Now this black and white at the, at the end, it costs 3,200 euros. This is the thing with Thermal Vision. It, with development, you get less expensive devices that are better in quality. With Poser. With Poser. All others yeah. are waiting what to do with the prices. Poser goes down, down, down. Um, the Proton, on the other hand, will be around 2,600 euros. 2,500, 2,600 euros. I think so there'll be two options. One with the uh, monocular, which yeah. we also have to talk about. Yeah. yeah. And Estimation. one without it. So true. But let's say roughly 2,500 to 2,700 euros in this in this price range, and it changes its position. The core was top of the line and the only option in thermal optic uh, thermal clip-ons with Pulsar. Now basically the Proton is an entry level, and Krypton is the Flagship, upper level. Yeah. yeah. And they priced the Proton below core and Krypton above core. So they they segmented the the market into two sections uh, i would say the entry level and then the full professional best available technology and so on um so i think we came to the uh, i think we did the monocular still yeah. yeah so the monocular on on core devices on this uh, 55 model uh was uh you put it on the bayonet, so you had to remove it before putting on the adapter. With, uh, with the Pulsar Proton, it's the same like with Krypton. You get a um, monocular which goes directly on this bayonet behind the thread. And you can use the monocular through the adapters. Some older adapters are still too small, so you're not able to use them. But with all new models, you are able to use them with uh, Rusan and SmartClip. So you just put this monocular through the adapter, which is on the device, uh, and then you use it. It's really easy because you just remove the monocular and put it on a daytime scope. So it's really, really easy. Uh, again, something what... So this is the... This the, is the model without... The, yeah, the yeah. model without the... But it's basically it's the same form like this, only this upper part is different. If you look at the review of uh, Pulsar Proton, you will be able to see it. Standalone yeah. review, you will be able to see it. Okay, I, I think, think we covered everything. Practically yeah? it. Maybe there are some minor differences, like this one has a micro USB port and this one, one has a Type-C. Type -C. The warranty is still three years. The warranty is three years, yeah. But uh, if we learn something from our experience, first of all, there is not really a lot of warranty claims. And second of all, uh, you're also able to send the device back to service after the warranty expires. And they still are able to service it. You just pay for the, I think, material and, and labor, but usually the costs are really low. One more thing I would like to point out. What I uh, like more on core is the fact that this objective cover is yeah. attached to the device. Here you have two parts of the eyepiece cover and the objective cover, but they are not attached. Mm -hmm. I bet that a lot of people will be losing this. I think in about three careful. years, <laughs> this will be the most <laughs> yeah. sold product of Pulsar. I'm sure, because so many people will lose it that everybody will buy at least two or three <coughs> with their spare uh, parts. Yeah. With their spare parts. But all in all, it's really hard to, I would say five years ago, it was almost impossible to imagine that somebody will produce <coughs> this small and this light uh, thermal clip-on, which will have, uh, I would say, the same or better optical capabilities as core, which is two times bigger uh, in That's all really directions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, development in, you can see it from year to year. Okay, uh, I think we covered everything. Uh, if you forgot did. something, because this topic is normally quite complex, please use the comments below in this video or send us an email, call us. And if you like our YouTube channel, please subscribe. See you later, bye.